Hey guys, Ethan here. Today I wanted to make a video talking about AMD video encoders on Gentoo Linux. Now this video came about because I was experimenting with VA API versus the proprietary codec AMF, which both would be sort of an equivalent to NVIDIA's NVENC if you've ever used that before. What these are used for is if you're recording in something like OBS and you don't want to take a large performance hit while you record maybe a game, but at the same time you want some quick, clear encoding. By default, OBS does come with a few options. So you have X264, which is going to be uh, software encoding, which means that your CPU will be doing the encoding, which does a pretty good job quality-wise, but you'll take a pretty large performance hit. The other alternative, which comes mostly by default on an AMD GPU, is VA API. And this is about as good as it gets if you're on a fairly new AMD GPU. In my experience, as long as you properly set your bit rates, you shouldn't have any issue and you shouldn't really take a performance hit. However, some older AMD GPUs don't do as well with VA API and do much better with their proprietary codec AMF. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get the AMF encoder in case that's something that would help you. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to install the OBS StreamFX plugin. To do this is fairly simple on any distro. What you're going to do is you're going to go to this GitHub page and go to the Releases tab. And you're going to scroll down to the Assets. And you're going to find one of these releases that you want. So we can take the CLang or the GCC in this case. What we're going to do is we're just going to download it and we're going to unzip it into our um, our config directory of OBS. So I'm going to show you where that is now. So if you have your file, uh, whether using 7z or unzip depending on the file type, what you would do is you would unzip or uh, yeah unzip and you would select your home file. So let's say that it is here. We'll say streamfx and then we're going to say dash d and we're going to set it to this directory. So the dash d flag is basically where you want the outputted files to go. So we're going to either navigate to OBS Studio first or we're going to send it after. Either way, we're just going to unzip the files into this directory. Now when you do this, and this is going to be kind of weird because I have another uh, version of OBS open, so I'm just going to have to, let's, can I mute that? There we go, I'm going to mute that for now. Go into the settings here, and into our output and recording, and you may see an AMF encoder, but you may not. If you don't see the AMF encoder right away, that's going to be because you don't have the rest of the stuff we need. So the next thing that we need to do after getting StreamFX is we need to install AMD's AMF Vulkan driver. If we look in Portage right now and we look into AMF, what we have is we have AMD GPU Pro AMF and we also have AMD GPU Pro Vulkan. Now I think that you need both of these because you need to launch OBS with the proprietary version of Vulkan in order to properly record with the AMF encoder. So emerging these is very simple. You just have to unmask them, which I'm going to show you now. So what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to your etc portage package.accept keywords and it's either going to be a directory for you or a file. In my case it's a file. If it's a directory for you, just go into a file in that directory and start writing. And what we're going to want to do is make our way to wherever we have these written. So you can write this anywhere. We're going to put the full package atom. So it would be media-video AMD GPU Pro dash AMF. And then we're going to either proceed it by this uh, tilde AMD 64 Though some people just keep that blank. As long as the files in or as long as the name of the programs in this file it should work, but I always like to put this at the end. And we're gonna do the same thing with Vulkan. So once you have both of those, we can leave here and we can run our emerge command, which would look something like this. So 
you're going to go ahead and install this and come back when it installs. So now we're going to assume that you have those installed. First thing that we're going to want to do is just ensure that everything's in the right spot. So if you ls user share icd or uh, vo sorry vulcan icd.d and press enter, you should see a new file in here. If you've properly installed AMD GPU Vulkan, you'll see that AMD Pro ICD is available here. Radeon ICD and uh, the 64-bit version are provided by the Mesa package and are what you should be using by default. One other thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to run Vulkan Info and we're going to want to grep for the GPU. What this is going to do is it's going to show us our single GPU, but twice, because it's going to tell us the first time with the proprietary driver and the second time with the open source driver. The reason that we want to check twice is just to make sure that while we have the ICD, it's working properly. Now, if you don't know how to set a program to open with a specific version of Vulkan, what you do is you type VK underscore ICD underscore file names, all in capital, and then you navigate to the ICD that you want, like so, and then you type OBS. So we're setting the environmental variable here that will tell us where to look for Vulkan. So we press enter now, we're gonna launch anyway, and here we are in OBS. If we go down to recording, we should now be able to see, if you didn't before, AMD AMF H.264 AVC via FFmpeg. Now if you're on Gen 2, there is one more additional step that you'll need to do if it doesn't show up already. And this is by far the most difficult part of this process and what took me the longest to figure out. So while the system has AMF support, that doesn't mean that every program does. And the main program that's going to be responsible for the encoding here is FFmpeg. If you take a look at the use flags of FFmpeg, there's quite a few of them. The important one here is AMF, AMR, and AMR ENC. However, by default, there's going to be some use flags that are going to be masked by your uh, profile. And what that means is I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my portage directory. I just made a directory called profile, and inside of there is package.use.mask. What this does, and I'm going to go ahead and navigate into it now, is it allows us to basically remove a masked flag. So if your flag is written like this, so if you look at FFmpeg and the AMF flag looks like this, which basically parentheses followed by minus AMF in the close parentheses, you're going to have to unmask that manually. So again, to do that, you're going to go into this directory, etc portage, and then you're going to create a directory called profile, and inside of it, you're going to want package.use.mask. And inside of that file, you're going to add media video ffmpeg followed by minus amf. If all is done correctly, the flag should now be unmasked, and you should be able to emerge with it. Now, finally, we're going to have to go ahead and actually tell it what flags we want. So, if you navigate to your package.use directory here, excuse me, and we find FFmpeg. If you don't have it in here already, you're going to have to add it yourself. You're going to want to add AMF, AMR, and AMRENC. You need all three of these to get AMF to appear in OBS. Now, I noticed when compiling OB or FFmpeg afterwards, I would get errors. And when I would read the error, it would always come back to libdavid. So I found that. In order to compile with the AMF flag, this is the only one that gave me issues, I had to disable the David flag. Anyways, once you have all that set, you should be okay to re-emerge FFmpeg with those new use flags, and you should now have AMF. So here's the final thing that we need to do to actually get it working in OBS. So we're going to run it as before, and if you open it up now, we're going to launch anyway, go into settings output recording you're going to need to set this to advanced and then the encoder you need to set this to h264 avc avc is the only one that i think works the issue now is how do we record our games because we're using a different vulcan driver to record the game 
than we're using to actually play the game. In order to do this, we're going to need another plugin. This one, though, is much simpler. Or it's not really a plugin, but same thing. It's called OBS VK Capture. And this is actually found in, I believe, the Guru repository. Yep, right here, Guru. So if you don't know what Guru is, it's similar to, you can think of it as a more dev-focused branch of a repository. So packages that don't make it into Gentoo usually end up in Guru, like ones that are not 100% officialized. So to enable that, all you need to do is eselect repository enable OBS VK capture. And this, of course, assumes that you have eselect repository emerged. Or sorry, uh, enable Guru. Once you have that enabled, you can just emerge OBS VK capture. Let that run through. You may need to unmask it, but I already showed you how to do that. And final step, we need to open OBS with different command. We need to add, let me uh, go ahead and do this again. Let me clear this terminal out, it's getting messy. All right, we're back with the clear terminal. So now finally, all we need to do is run this VK ICD file names environmental variable. Follow that with OBS underscore use underscore EGL equals one. This is only if you're using the XORG display server, which most people should be. Now, if we launch OBS, launch anyway, and we go to our recording that's on AMF, and we should now have this option, game capture, somewhere in here. There it is, game capture, and capture any window. So we have two options now. So we have screen capture, but using AMF, we don't have the option to do a window capture. You can see we don't have any sort of X composite window capture. So let's try a game now. What we need to do is we need to append the OBS VK capture command to some launch option for whatever game you want. So in my case, I'm gonna to try to open Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and after all of my other launch options, I'm gonna add OBS VK Capture, and then the percent command percent. So here we are now in the game, and if we go to OBS and we go to Game Capture, we can see that our window is being captured, and that's about all there is to it. Now the reason that we wanna use Game Capture is just because the performance is a little bit better but screen capture should always work. So if that's something that you wanna do, you can go ahead, you won't have really any issues. One other note that I wanna to add to this before I end this video is that because you've installed a second ICD for Vulkan, you're gonna to wanna to set your, prior, like your primary one. You don't want to accidentally be using the wrong version of Vulkan. So if you take a look, if you look at your end variable, this, is, this could be anywhere, this could be uh, it could be anywhere in here. If you grep for VK, you'll see nothing's in there. So what we want to do is we actually want to set, this is just going to be what I'm going to do for being in, um, in fish. There we go. Now, and and I grep for fish, you can see that the Radeon one is the one that comes up first. So if I type in, type in now Vulkan info and grep for GPU, only my open source driver appears. And the same thing will have to be done in ETC environment. So if you go into this file, this is gonna be for bash, it's gonna be like system wide. We're gonna do the same thing here. So we're gonna do Vulkan ICD file names and we're gonna set the directory. And we're gonna go ahead again and copy the one that we want and paste it in here. And the reason that we're doing that is now if we open up a bash shell and we source ETC in profile type n and I grep for vk, you'll see right here, Vulkan file names is set to the one that I want. And if I type in Vulkan info and I grep for GPU, there it is right here. This is a really important step to do because what can happen is the proprietary driver can take priority. So you might have issues where a program won't start or you may be getting a worse performance on it and you won't even know that you're using the wrong Vulkan driver. So that's just another tip I wanted to throw in before I end this video. So if this video was helpful, give it a like, and if you have any issues, 
you can leave them in the comments or you can join my Discord server linked in the description and I'll try to help you as soon as possible. If you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.